Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our quick hands-on review of the Print Cube. This is advertised as the world's smallest mobile color printer, and it has a very successful Indiegogo crowd campaign that has already raised over $3 million. We can see from this uh, quick video clip that it can be advertised to print on nearly any surface, whether it's paper, even metal, leather, cardboard, or wood. And it just seems like this magical little unit that can be tucked away into a pocket, into a backpack, and then allows you to very quickly print using thermal ink cartridges. Uh, they are, of course, replaceable, and it claims to last for up to one year of use before you need to change the uh, ink cartridge has a Type-C port for charging, and also claims to uh, can be used safely even on your skin. There is a erasable cartridge option that apparently is non-toxic to create some temporary tattoos. This is designed for more niche and specific cases where you aren't printing too much content, but you're putting it onto a smaller surface. What's interesting is it doesn't actually have a mobile app that you can download on iOS or Android, but rather there's a QR code on the back of the printer that you can scan that takes you to a web page once you're connected to the printer's Wi-Fi. And then from there, you're able to access a dashboard for sending over images. Here's the spec advertisement for the cartridges that it uses, and you can see that uh, it uh, claims to yield around 415 pages uh, of printed text in the A4 size. There's a standard ink cartridge that is a dye-based ink, easily removed using water or soap, and they claim that it's skin-friendly. Uh, there's also a solvent-based ink, which is going to be a lot harder to wipe off. Inside, we have just the printer itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. We have the ink cartridge. If we look closely, it's actually using an existing cartridge design for HP Office Jets 5746. So in fact, if you want to buy a replacement, it shouldn't be that expensive. But anyways, other accessories include the aforementioned charging cable, and it is using that standard USB Type-C. There's also two test pieces of paper. So let's take a closer look at the design of the print cube. We can see that indeed it's very small and compact. The bottom here features a Type-C charging port, and uh, on the side here we can actually see the cartridge when you pop it in, it's transparent, giving you a pretty cool peek inside, almost reminds me of steampunk aesthetic. Now the base here is magnetic, so it can be attached and closed really easily. You can pop this out and basically this is where the printer head will be touching the paper that you scan. There's a safety on and off switch that you can tap on to also manually turn it on. You can also open it in order to pop in and change the cartridge, and there's also roller feet that makes it glide more easily on different surfaces. It'll snap itself into place and it's very flush. These uh, contact points need to be connected to these dots here so it can actually read and control the ink that's coming out and simply snap it back into place and lock it shut. Of course, now the lid becomes very important because you have to close it up when not in use to prevent the ink cartridge from drying out. Let's take a closer look at the dashboard next. Right now, the print cube is turned on. There are LED lights which are illuminating it very softly. After which point, the QR code actually takes you to a web domain 192.168.44.1 as we are connected to the print cube. And this is basically the dashboard for controlling it. We can see the power that's remaining. We can also see some sample images or prints that we have already saved over to the dashboard. Uh, so from here, we can see our home screen. We can also tap on the settings here to change things like the density and DPI of the prints to make it more detailed, uh, higher resolution or lower resolution. Lower ones will be a little faster to print out and you can also see the color calibration if you want to fine-tune these things for cyan magenta and yellow as we're adding new prints if i tap on this button you can actually tap an image that's saved from your phone's memory. You can also do things like add text if you want to simply just type something out. You can change the ratio of it. You can also do things like realign it and even change the opacity of the image. So let's try the demo image that they have by default, which is a Pac-Man eating these three colored dots. We can tap on this to begin printing it. We can edit it, duplicate it, or delete it. So if I want to tap on print, uh, once again, it's going to confirm if I want to change the density. If I want to change the brightness, you can actually see a preview down below, which which, by the way, I can further adjust if I want to make it smaller or larger. You can see it's capable of doing that as well. Just tap on the print key, and now it's going to quickly convert. It takes a few seconds. I'm going to tap on the middle key here once it turns green, and I'm going to just kind of slide along, and now it's done. So basically, it turns green when it's printing, and then white again when the print is finished. By the way, if I'm simply printing out the same image, I don't have to resend it every time. Basically, the last image that you push over will be remembered in the memory. Let's do a quick test once more. So it works pretty well on a flat piece of paper, but let's try something curved like a cup. With a little bit more of practice, it actually is something that can still get you fairly good results, even on these irregular curved surfaces, which is, again, 
better than expected. A jump cut, and here are some other prints that I tried it out with. Some takeaways would be, I think for text, it does the best job in terms of logos. All of the above here are actually images that I took using the camera of the tablet and then pushed over. Of course, one limitation is that this is a pretty narrow printer. Uh, so in terms of the width, this is as much as it can print out. If you do want to print, again, a larger image, this is definitely not going to be the best choice because then you have to do multiple lines. So if you want to stitch them together, it's up to you to make sure that you have to align it properly and go from top to bottom. It's not the most vibrant or punchy looking images just because it is still using a ink cartridge, but overall most of the details can definitely be made out, even though it's not as punchy as say maybe on your phone or tablet screen, it is overall I would say doing a pretty good job. So overall I would say that it works better than expected. Just looking at the video, I thought that it would be a product that promises too much and would fall short of those lofty ambitions and expectations, but in reality it actually isn't half bad, in fact it's really easy easy to use. Of course, uh, we have the standard ink cartridge here, which means that unlike, say, a laser cartridge or a laser printer, uh, this is going to be more susceptible to washing away if it comes into contact with water or moisture. So it's not permanent, but for some very quick prints, again, maybe a seal on an envelope for a quick text, uh, something for DIY projects, anything that's a little bit thinner in terms of its shape, it can definitely print out with decent effect. I'm going to print out OS reviews once again, and you can see that Indeed, it actually works without too, too many issues, even on thicker pieces of paper, and it looks quite clean. Now, as a final test, we're going to try printing on a thicker piece of wood and see how it does. The key here is to have materials that you're working with which are large enough for it to scan through. If pieces of paper are too small, it might not be the smoothest experience just because it needs to accommodate at least room for the rollers uh, for it to come in contact with the piece of paper and then allows you to glide along. If it's too small of a surface, then sometimes it's not going to be the most consistent of results. It does still work, but you have to give it a few more seconds to dry and then the colors themselves do look quite good. So that's more or less it for a hands-on review of the Print Cube uh, by The God Things. I have to say that looking at the Kickstarter campaign and Indiegogo campaigns, at first I was rather skeptical and worried because it looks like something that was too good to be true. The actual product still isn't perfect, I'd say, but as long as it's text uh, or anything with really sharp edges, cartoons, things like that, it actually does a reasonably good job. The idea itself is very innovative and cool. And if you are looking for a small DIY-based uh, printer, this might actually be an interesting choice to take a closer look at. You can find out more details in the links down below. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been our hands-on review of the Print Cube, the smallest color printer in the world by The God Things.